A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord Ipsignon the Feast of the Santo Nino extends the celebration of Christmas in the Philippines. The Santo Nino gives material representation to the mystery of the Incarnation. Our God became one like us. He too wants a baby and a child who needed parental care, just like any other. A child has been put forward by Jesus as the image of a person, of a citizen of the kingdom. Let the children come to me. The kingdom of God belongs to such as this, he said. Whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. This is from Mark 10. 14 to 16. Being childlike was Jesus' disarming approach, his enchanting good news. We usually associate a child with innocence and truthfulness, with simplicity or humility and openness, with dependence and trust. Indeed, commendable attributes worth emulating. But we may also ask, they are dependent on what? On whom? They are simple or humble in relation to whom? Trusting whom? So actually, these attributes are also dispositions that qualify our relationships with others, with God. A child's simplicity or humility and truthfulness could be a pattern of the Christian's attitude towards others, and the child's dependence and trust as the pattern of the Christian's attitude towards God. The bottom line then is relationships. Only when we relate do we grow, otherwise we remain stagnant. In our relating is where and how to be truly human. Our relationships show 
where our true value lies. A child does not exist all by itself, out of the blue. A child is a child only and always in relation to his or her father or mother. The identity of a child always presupposes a primary recognition of the presence of somebody else, of the love of someone else, mother and or father. Who we are as children always points to whose we are. Could this be what Jesus wants us to understand in the Gospel today? He says, did you not know that I must be in my father's house? The boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, listening to the word, questioning, discerning how to respond wisely. But he returned to Nazareth with his parents after and was obedient to them. And he grew in wisdom and age and favor before God and man in the ordinariness of Nazareth. Being about the Father's business in Jerusalem for three days is not all. We necessarily have to know and understand God's ways, God's word, but it is in the ordinariness of daily life that real meaning is uncovered. Nazareth is usually equated with hiddenness, the hidden life of Jesus, but in reality, Nazareth is the great revelation. In our Nazareth is where we learn what life truly means. In our laughing, crying, talking, playing, learning to walk, working, in relating. The ordinariness of daily life is the place where wisdom is lived. This, there is a wisdom of daily life at the center of which is knowing how to stand and stay with Jesus in doing the Father's business. By embracing the banality of our daily life, we actually know that God is present there and not somewhere else. And it is from there that we live as children of God, as brothers and sisters to one another, and eventually grow in the knowledge of who and whose we are. So may the Feast of Santo Nino move us to dance to the beat of divine love in a simple, childlike manner of relating, of living, of loving. <music>